so here is my homemade uh, Merlin style Steadicam. Uh, I'm gonna I'll I'll take it apart a little bit uh, later and show you guys the individual parts and um, how I put them together and uh, where I found them and prices and stuff like that. But I just want to show you um, the Steadicam right now with the camera on it, so you can see what it looks like and how well it's balanced. I'm using my uh, Nikon D5000 DSLR camera, and uh, this camera weighs about like two and a half pounds or so. Um, and as you can see, it just floats around very smoothly and very slowly, which is exactly what you want. Um, they, there's a, what they call a one second drop test with the uh, Merlin style steady cams when you're trying to get them balanced. What you do is you lift up the bottom so that the camera and the arm are at a horizontal position and drop it. And it should take, it should take a second, at least a second, to fall back to a, uh, a horizontal, you know, to a position with the camera on top. And that's what they call dynamic balance. Um, now, as you can see, I'm using washers for weights in the front and in the back. Um, and these washers do not equal the weight of the camera, but since they are uh, so far away from the hinge point, then the uh, cantilever, you know, they act as a cantilever and the weight is increased because of that. So um, I'm using uh, as my as my pivot point, I have a U-joint that I bought on eBay from a hobby shop. Um, and this U-joint is a steel U-joint. Um, it's pretty small, but I can definitely take the weight. And I think I got it for about six bucks. Um, so not too bad. Uh, these washers that I'm using for weights, the cost is negligible. They were these are big washers, so I don't know. They were probably around. I don't know, maybe 60 cents a piece or something like that. Um, these arms, which are the most important part of the whole thing, are actually aluminum tubing that uh, I use as uh, balusters. My dad and I, um, they're used as deck balusters. And I just bent them over my knee and uh, took a sledgehammer to the ends to make them flat so that I could drill holes in them right here and make this a hinge so that it, when I need to adjust the weight rather than adding the weight I can add the weight up to a certain point so I get it close to the same weight and then I can pivot this arm right here to make this uh, lower counterweight further away or closer to my pivot point. Um, for the handle I have a aluminum barrel from a flashlight that I use for airsoft um, it's uh, the flashlight comes in like four pieces so that you can extend the barrel if you want and add more batteries if you wanted to I wasn't using this barrel so what I did was I cut the bottom off that has the male threads and uh, took it and screwed it into the female threaded side um, so that I could clamp in some skateboard uh, ball bearings in there and sitting on top of the ball bearings I have my U-joint which has a four millimeter bolt in it going straight down and through the ball bearings and it's clamped on with a lock nut and then um, I have another lock nut on there so that I could put this stack of washers on there. I didn't want to machine a piece of metal or something like that just for this so I just got a stack of four washers and put it on there and clamped it on with another lock nut and then I use this as my panning ring so when I'm holding this uh, steady cam, I hold the handle here and then I can just use my thumb to turn the camera so I never have to touch the camera because touching the camera would defeat the purpose of the whole, you know, of the whole thing. It would defeat the point of having a steady cam if you had to touch your camera because then that would just, you know, that would be so jerky. Um, so the way the camera is mounted, and this is a Nikon D5000, by the way, because I know people are going to ask me that. Um, the way the camera is mounted to this, like I said before, I have this end of it flattened and then bent at an angle, you know, I just made, I did all this by hand, I, there was no measuring involved, this is all just by feel. Um, so I have my joint anchored here with another four millimeter bolt and a lock nut. Um, and then over here, I have a quick release plate, which is uh, for a camera, people use them to put on a camera tripod. And uh, so I bought one of those, it was probably around eight to ten bucks, uh, and I'll show you how I can take the camera off. And so now the camera is off, and uh, you can see this plate. I just have another bolt going through it, and then on the bottom, it's attached with a wing nut, and that's what holds it on. 
So uh, I'll take it inside and I'll uh, take apart the handle so I can show you guys the bearings and how I put the, uh, the washer stack on there. And then um, I'll show you some uh, footage of what it looks like with the camera handheld and what it looks like with the camera on the Steadicam. So I just want to show you guys how well this thing works. Um, I am outside, so uh, every once in a while I get a breeze that um, catches these weights on the bottom and it will blow it around a little bit. But I um, just want to show you this one second test again, show you how slow that falls, because this weight is almost just where I want it. You see how slowly that falls back to a vertical position. So that's pretty much exactly what you want um, when you're trying to balance these things. Uh, you know, I only knew about uh, Merlin style steady cams. Um, you know, I, I just found out about them recently, and I thought, you know, that is really cool. I got to have one. I looked them up on eBay, and like the cheapest one that I could find was around 800 bucks. And so I said, hell no, there's no way I'm going to pay 800 bucks for that for something that I'm not going to use that often. You know, I'm not a professional video guy, so I'm hardly ever going to use this. But I thought that maybe I might like to have something like this if I wanted to record airsoft games or anything, because it really does make a huge difference. Um, and so, you know, I made this all with parts that um, I found around my house or that I could get on eBay for really cheap. And I think, you know, all in all, um, including the parts that you may have to buy, this may have cost me around 50 bucks, um, but probably a lot less actually because a lot of the stuff I already had around my house. Like these aluminum balusters are probably the most expensive thing on here uh, because you would have to buy a whole box of them. Um, but I already had them laying around the house. But anyway, so I'm going to show you my, there's that panning ring. I can turn it with my, turn the whole thing with my thumb on those ball bearings and it's really smooth. So anyway, let me take it inside and uh, take it apart and show you guys how I put it together. So I want to show you guys the inner workings of the handle assembly here. So to get it off, I first have to loosen up this set screw that's inside the U-joint. Just loosen that up a bit. And then I can twist this out, this bolt out. And so now my handle assembly is free from the arms. So now you can see basically how this works. I've got these washers stacked up on here with a lock nut on both sides so that it'll spin freely. Uh, it'll spin independently of the handle. And if you guys see the turning. And if you look down inside there, you can see my skateboard ball bearing. And so to get that out, I'm gonna grab this nut with a pair of pliers and loosen up this bolt. And now my washers are coming loose. I get the nut off, the washers off. And then you can see inside there, there is the uh, ball bearing assembly with the lock nut on top of it. So to get this out, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'll just turn this part right here. If I can, I might need pliers to do this. There we go. I'm going to remove this collar right here, and I'll show you guys what this is in a second. So this is uh, how I decided to lock in my skateboard ball bearing, which is this piece right here. So as you can see, I just have it with a plain old bolt going through it. And actually, this is actually three bearings. This is a large skateboard bearing right here, um, and the inner diameter was kind of big. And uh, I wanted to be able to just use one thing to go straight through the bearing and then into my U-joint, which has a four millimeter hole. So what I did was I got this bearing that has an inner diameter of, I think, seven or eight millimeters. And then I got another pair of bearings um, that were the seven or eight millimeters um, with an inner diameter of four millimeters so that it would fit right inside that hole. And so I actually have three here. So it's clamped on all three. So I've got, you know, uh, three different bearings that it's all going to roll on, so this is a very smooth movement. I like it a lot. Um, and so the way I clamp this in here is this is the male threaded end of this flashlight barrel, and I actually just cut it off of the other end there with a hacksaw. It actually went there because this screwed into a flashlight tube to extend the tube so I could put more batteries in it. So I cut this off, and uh, these are the female threads right here where another end of uh, another piece of flashlight barrel would have screwed in, and I just used that 
to screw in there and clamp it in because this fits in there perfectly. Right onto that shelf right there where this piece is supposed to meet inside there, this goes in and it stops right there. And then this screws right on top of it to clamp them in so then I can't pull the bearings out. The bearings won't fall out on their own. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this back up a little bit before I put it back in. And then back into the flashlight barrel it goes. Put the bearings in first and then I'll put this in there to clamp it. I'm going to try and make sure it's centered. It does have a little bit of slop but that's alright. I mean I'm, I'm doing this all with just parts I found around my house. Make sure it's tight. And then I'll put my stack of washers, this is actually five washers, not four washers, on here. And, they, and the uh, lock nut stops them so they don't rub up against the barrel there. There's just a very tiny space there. And then I'll put this lock nut back on. And I'm going to have to hold that still with this and turn it with the screwdriver because, of course, it is on ball bearings. So I need to hold it still. And there you go. So now, since this uh, this is a four millimeter bolt, which refers to the diameter of the threads, not the diameter of the valleys, um, and this isn't exactly exactly a four millimeter hole. Uh, it is a little tight getting in there, but I can just turn it to get it in there, and uh, I get it all the way up um, until the base of the U joint is pushing right up against that lock nut. And uh, that just ensures me that nothing is, go even though it's a lock nut, that just gives me a little extra assurance that this isn't going to slide around and pieces aren't going to get loose. And then I can just tighten this set screw. And that is how my handle assembly works. I just want to clarify for anyone who's wondering that these are washers that I'm using for weights. Um, these are three quarter inch washers um, and I have these other washers on top of them because the hole is three quarter inches uh, wide obviously and so these wing nuts will go straight through it if I didn't put that washer on top. And so I've made this so that um, there's a hole drilled in both of these pieces and they're just clamped side to side. I don't know if you can see that. But, um, and all I do, and also as you can see I have it bent a little bit to the left and I did that on purpose because um, since this is a DSLR, the tripod hole, the uh, the hole for the, the quarter inch screw mount for putting it on a tripod is not exactly in the center of the camera so there's a little bit more weight over on the right and so I bent this arm out to the left a little bit so that it would counterweight that and that's what has, uh, that's what keeps the camera level when, uh, you know, it keeps it level side to side um, and then, you know, these weights being in front and back keep it level uh, front to back. Um, so I can loosen this wing nut up right here to move the arm back and forth to get it closer or further away from the camera. And then also I know it's not all that precise, but uh, I can just, since this is aluminum, I can just grab this here and just bend it a tiny bit here and there if I want to, um, if I need to make this stick out just a tiny bit because, I mean, you really would be surprised how much difference, you know, half a millimeter makes uh, to the balance when something needs to be balanced so precisely like this. Um, let me see, is there anything else that I'm missing? The, uh, oh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this, uh, camera mount I got on eBay, I think it was about eight to ten bucks, um, and this is a quick release camera mount, so it has a plate that attaches to your camera, and you just put it in there and snap it in, and this thing, you know, this pushes down on this button and it makes it close on the camera, and that holds it in tight. And so I don't have to, uh, and I wanted to have something like that on here, uh, because I don't want to have to readjust the balance in a major way every single time. Like if I just had a quarter inch screw mount here and I had to uh, screw it in each time, screw my camera in every time, I would be messing around with the balancing every single time I wanted to use this thing and I didn't want to have to do that. Uh, so it added another eight to ten bucks to the price of this build, but that's really not a big deal because like I said, um, the cheapest uh, real Merlin Steadicam that you're going to be able to buy uh, is going to be around eight hundred bucks new. So. Uh, and, of course, this is not um, as neat looking as the Merlin Steadicam. It doesn't, you know, the Merlin ones, the, the real Merlin Steadicams have screw-on weights that you can put on there. They're custom-made for it. And the, uh, the arm locks, which is something that I wish I could do, um, because if I bump into something really hard with this, uh, it might move, and then that would throw off my balance. But I just have to really, really tighten up this wing nut to keep the arm from moving 
um, so that I don't have to worry about it being off balance, like if I set it down somewhere and then I want to pick it up, I'm going to make sure that the arm hasn't moved. Um, so I'm going to show you guys uh, some footage I took of uh, just walking around the pool uh, in the backyard at my girlfriend's house. and. Um, so you guys can see the huge difference from handheld video versus handheld video on uh, a steady cam like this.